My name is Jean Kopper and I'm a surgeon really on a mission to introduce healthcare professionals and everyone interested really in solving healthcare problems to the world of deep neural networks. Now, if this is the first video that you see, please go back and start the series from the beginning. Else, This doesn't really make sense. There's a playlist on YouTube. One video follows the rest. So in case this is the first one that you see, please start at the beginning. It will really mean uh, a lot more to you. Of course, if you've been following along, let's continue our very exciting journey as we move towards well, this is actually our last step, I would, I would think, before we really get into deep neural networks. Now, up till now, we've really only looked at a target variable that is of a numerical, a continuous numerical type. So we're just trying to predict a single value. In many cases, though, we want to predict something that is a categorical variable, something such as the patient has a disease, doesn't have a disease. In the financial world, we might say this is a fraudulent transaction or it's not a fraudulent transaction. We might have a CT scan with uh, nodules in, uh, in the chest and it might, you know, we might have to classify that CT scan as, or that nodule on the CT scan as malignant or benign. These are categorical outcomes. Uh, the examples that I've mentioned have a sample space of only two, so those are binary or dichotomous problems. But we can really model something with a thousand uh, elements in the sample space of our target value. Now, this just introduces a slight uh, complexity to the problem, but believe me, it is easily solved and you actually already know how to solve it. So again, this is a, a document that's available on our pub, so you can download it. I'll put it on GitHub as well, so you can look at these R files. Again, if you just stumble across this, don't worry about the code. As we start developing these, as we, as we move into real proper deep neural networks, you'll pick up how to code in this environment called the R programming language very, very quickly. I use the R programming language specifically because it is so easy to teach, which is what I do face-to-face -face as well, uh, statistical learning, machine learning, biostatistics, just using R and R Studio. And although the main language for deep neural networks is Python, once you understand things in R, it's very easy to pick up Python and continue your work there. So no problem at all. Don't worry about the coding, though. You will definitely pick it up as we go. So this is the document on R pubs. You can read that. If you don't want to uh, listen to this video and watch this video, you can just read the document. So what we have here at the top, you see a categorical target variable, and we're going to express this as 0, 1, 0, 1, and 2, depending on how many elements there are in, our, in, in, in the sample space of our target variable. So if we have a binary outcome like yes or no, we're just going to use 0 and 1, and depending how you set up the problem, you can decide which is going to be 0 and which is going to be 1. Now, an easy way to solve this problem is just what we call the sigmoid function that you can see here. There we have it. It says take any input plug it in there. So if I plug the value negative 3 in there, it'll be 1 over 1 plus e, which is Euler's number, to the power minus negative 3, and that will give you a value. Let me show you some code of what the sigmoid function actually looks like. There we go. No matter what input we give to the sigmoid function, you see as I hover over here, you see negative 3.76, negative 3.6, all the way up. It doesn't matter where I go, Look at the values. They are always going to be between 0 and 1. They are constrained between 0 and 1. And following what we are trying to achieve, uh, still trying to get these values for our parameters, beta sub 0, beta sub 1, that, that really hasn't changed. We're still after that. So this little z, we can still see that as a problem that we set up here. Yeah, I've got a problem with four feature variables, x1 to x4, and I still have my beta 0 plus beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4, and I can just call that my z and plug that into the z here. So in the end, we have equation 3 here, which says sigmoid of z is 1 over 1 plus e to the power negative, that very familiar thing that we've watched in all the videos up till now. That should be very familiar with you, uh, uh, very familiar for you. Now, here's the network that we also saw in a previous video. I have values plugged in here for my feature variables x1, x2, x3, x4. I plug those values in. I multiply them by these parameters, which we call weights, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4, so that I get 
values in my hidden layer here. This is a hidden layer of nodes or neurons and they are just a multiplication of the weight and my input variable, say for instance the values in row 1 of a spreadsheet and I add all of that together and I also add the bias node and now I get z and there is z just plugged in there and I plug it into the sigma function right there and now it gives me y hat, the predicted value which remember if my output, my target variable only has 0 and 1's in it, 0 and 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 for all the rows, I'm going to get a value here for my predicted which is going to be constrained between 0 and 1. Sure, it's going to have some decimal values, but it is constrained between 0 and 1 exactly where I want it because now I have a target variable that is really within range of this 0 and 1 of my ground truth target value. So let's look at an example. I'm going to import this logistic regression CSV spreadsheet file and here we have it nicely expressed on the screen. We see x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3 and x sub 4. Those are my four feature variables and you see the target variables. So for the first patient here we have 15.5, 110, 2.5, 52.6. You can imagine these are variables for some blood results or you know whatever the case might be and the outcome the target variable is a 1 and there's another one a 1 a 1 a 1 there's 0 0 and you can go through click on all of these run through this whole data set of 150 entries. Now fortunately for us in R there is the GLM function generalized linear models I can plug in all my values y being predicted by that dot means it's just a shorthand for x sub 1 x sub 2 x sub 3 and x sub 4 it uses a um, a logistic regression model here with a binary outcome and if we look down here at the estimate column we see there are our beta values there's beta sub 0 negative 13.8 beta sub 1 beta sub 2 beta sub 3 beta sub 4 so if i plug in this first patient's values 15.5 110 2.5 if i plug that in to my function 1 over 1 plus e to the power that I get a solution of 0.619. Now we can create a simple cutoff. Remember this is my y hat now, my predicted value for the target variable. Now the, this patient was a 1.0 and what we can very simply do is say let's have a cutoff here. Let's go back to the graph. Let's have a cutoff of right there and we say that everything above so you see it's 0 0.5 there on the y-axis. Uh, anything above that 0 0.5 we'll see as a 1, as it is going to 1 anyway. And any, uh, so 0 0.5 and up we'll see as a 1, and less than 0 0.5 we'll see as a 0. And we can code for that, and we'll do that in the when we create the neural networks. So 0 0.619, that's above 0 0.05, so the prediction here will be for 1. Lo and behold, that first patient did have a target value of 1, so the error made in this first step when we set up our loss function and our cost function as we did before so that we can do a back propagation to update these beta values in this instance it's going to be spot on now this as we created it here is not a, a neural network we've just used plain simple old logistic regression but as you can see it is absolutely correct it uh, predicted a one and it really is a one so there we have it. I think that is the last piece of the puzzle that we require just before we move on to, to proper neural networks. Uh, once again, uh, I plead with you to tell people about this video series, about these publications on RPUB. I'll put some stuff out on LinkedIn as well. So follow me on Twitter, uh, connect with me on, uh, on LinkedIn, look at these RPUBs. These files are available on GitHub. Uh, subscribe on YouTube if you really are interested in developing um, your knowledge around deep neural networks so that you can learn to solve problems in your domain. Let everyone know about uh, these videos. Let's, let's start a community where at least uh, from one point of view uh, medical professionals get involved and we don't just leave these, to, uh, these problems to computer scientists. We have the domain knowledge and it is really our duty to get involved with this. Just as an aside, just the excuse of course all the noise, I've spoken to it about it before, there's a neuroscience center being built right outside my window here in, in my office and it's early in the morning even before 
even before working hours, I come in early, but the noise is already going as they hammer away. Now, nothing I can do about that. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, in the next one, I hope that we get started on proper deep neural networks.